won't stray from his route. My veil helps, but if I get too close, he will certainly see something. I need to stay out of his sight. That's the shipment I'm supposed to destroy. This must be the shipment Liko spoke of. The crates and barrels are all marked with the Azadi seal. Weapons, if Liko is correct. I'm supposed to find a way to destroy these. Noisily. There's black powder in this barrel. They use it for the muskets and cannons. It's a powerful explosive and propellant. Black powder, imported from Azadir. A handful should suffice. According to the labeling on this crate, it contains flintlock parts. Flintlock parts for the muskets. Flint pieces for the flintlock muskets. It's a sturdy rope, probably soaked through with brine. Hey, you! Steel nails, imported from Western Azadir, I reckon. They're used to mount the pipes around the city. A nail, fresh from the steel mills. This might be of use to me. soaked hemp won't burn easily. What are you doing here? Leviathan oil. They hunt the great beasts for this precious fluid. It's used as illuminant and for lubrication. Leviathan oil. I believe they use this as lubricant for the tubes and as an illuminant in street lamps. Whalers hunt the Leviathan for weeks and months before tiring them out. The mountain-sized beasts can provide oil and meat to a village for an entire year. They even use the bones. The rope's soaked through with oil. It should work as a burning fuse now.
always angry, but a good man to have by your side in a dangerous situation. I trust Liko not to kill me, for as long as the Resistance needs me. After that, he will turn on me. I'd better be ready. I remember the day I killed his father. And I remember him. He was as old as me, just a boy. Afraid and angry. Where have you been? At a National Front meeting, identifying your turncoat. Uh, it takes a traitor to find a traitor. Think you can point him out for us? I can. Go on then, before we lose him. That man? Was he at the National Front Assembly? He smells of tobacco. I'm not familiar with the scent. It's probably a Northland's weed. His breathing is heavy and wet. My table's always open. Crispy bitterlings wrapped in a crunchy His skin appears red and blistered. Perhaps he spent too much time in the sun. Got eats from across the Northlands, from far away as a deer. He smells faintly of camphor or the pine forests I've of got the, the north. Non -magical medicines your body Maybe lavender needs. oil. Fully authorized and Go on, Kian, show us the traitor, if you can. Pal. Who are you people? Where are you taking me? Have you got the wrong man? Northlands, from far away as a deer. Something tied you over before tea. Midnight snack. Early breakfast. The Azadi return to get proverbial back scratched. The mole deceived me. She said the runner would be unharmed and yet they killed him. I can see no reason for his murder other than vengeance and cruelty. How can I trust someone like that? I can't let this lie pass, or I will appear weak. There's no need to antagonize the mole. If I want her to give us weapons, I must play by her rules, no matter how deceptive she may be. And my mission was to get the weapons, not to spare a runner's life. He was just a boy. He'd harmed no one. Does she hate the Azadi so much that she's been completely blinded? Why did you have the runner killed? Good question. Why did Azadi see the need to kill Banda children? Because one day they think Banda children grow to be Banda women and men, and then they come for a Zadi. Better make sure this never happen. We have no time for this. I know my people have committed atrocities. We are not the only ones. What's important now is to make sure this never happens again. And we need this one's help to win the war. If she has something on her mind, I should let her speak. One death cannot compensate for another. This is true, Azadi. Retribution may be counterproductive. 
But your people must also be made to suffer for their crime. They need to see the consequence of their action. They need to feel pain. And that man, that boy, he was in wrong place at wrong time. He's safer this way. He cannot run back and tell on us, or on you. You talk about making my people suffer, but my people know nothing of what has transpired here in the Northlands. You can't lay this at the feet of all Azadi. How do I make them see? How do I make them understand our loss? The Banda Banta are no more because of Azadi. I can gnash teeth and sharpen claw for many moon. It will not change truth. Your people will never mourn mine. But if I take life, make mother suffer the loss of child, make friend miss friend, husband miss wife, maybe then someone will think of mine. Maybe then someone will remember our loss. I'm not sure that's how it works. Perhaps not, Kian of the Azadi. But one can always hope. I may not honour that part of the arrangement, but I will honour most important part. Your resistance will get weapon. All the weapon I have to give. I still need some for my men. Sharpest sword, swiftest axe, strongest bow. But the rest go to your people. Not your people, Azadi. Your people rebel movement, otherwise would be silly. Of course. Thank you. My men will be in touch with your women, and also men. Leave now, Azadi. It's dark and late, and I will sleep. Sleep and dream of happier day in Burrow to the north, where laughter of children fill every tunnel. Dream of friend and of family, while I mourn them all. I should continue my assignment. I must leave. Good. Moon moving. Night only has so many hours. Rooster and Kitten. Ulvik the barkeep is friendly with the resistance. The Rooster and Kitten. What's the matter? She says. What's the matter, Michelle? What a laugh. Look, I don't see there's a man with a bloody spear behind the curtain wearing his arty boots and a helmet. 
Alvik doesn't have the most sophisticated or upscale clientele, and I'm sure he's happy about that. At least they're not a raucous or unruly lot. Alvik keeps them in check. There are mostly laborers and dock workers in this bar. It's the perfect cover for the resistance. That must be the publican. Alvik, I think his name was. The publican of the rooster and... Kitten. That is the oddest name. Why not the cock and... Oh, yes. He's the proprietor of this establishment. What can I get you, my good man? I'm not here to drink, and I have no use for alcohol. It clouds the mind, confuses the heart, and taints the soul. I have little faith in the quality of the water in this place, but I can at least hold a cup and pretend to be drinking stronger stuff. Goddess knows I'm not a drinking man. What does one order to blend properly in with the patrons of this filthy hive? A glass of iced wine, please. Iced wine. Wine and ice. Are, are you trying to draw attention to yourself? Here's your merry minstrum, da. Your friend. She's upstairs. Friend? Yes, your friend. She's been waiting. You don't want to keep a woman waiting for too long. Another beard, huh? No. Your friend I'm... is still waiting. Up. Stairs. Great Mojar's tentacles, are you still not upstairs? Your friend won't wait forever. You're as dim as a day flight, da. Up. Upstairs. Oh. I should be getting home. Just one more. One more for the road. A bit of Dolmari courage to help me get started. And then I'll head home. What do you want? Eh? No, really, what do you want? This seat's taken. Plenty of other seats available. No shortage of seating here, just not this one, mate. Are you picking for a fight? Oh, I'm ready when you are, son. Oh, I just have to finish this one glass first. <clears throat> Five minutes, tops. She must be this friend Ulvik was referring to. She does appear to be waiting for someone. My friend, according to the barkeep. I don't know her face. Ah, finally. There you are. Sit. Please. I saved your seat. Sit down. You look quite ridiculous standing there. I'll be cursed. Take a seat, will you? You're calling attention to us. Fine, don't sit. Just stand there like an idiot. Sooner or later you'll tire and then you'll just have to sit. Smile. We're old friends, remember? I don't remember that at all. Who are you? I'll tell you who I'm not. I'm not with the Resistance, and I'm not Azadi. If you're not with the Resistance and you're not Azadi, who are you working for? I'm working for me, and I can either make your life easier, or a lot worse. This must be a mistake. The publican was clearly confused. This woman is not looking for me. She claims to be my friend, and then she threatens me. Not the best way to begin a conversation. 
in Shadow's name is this woman? If she's looking for me, I need to know why. I will have your name. You will have my name. So forceful. So like a caged animal. You're a popular man, Kinavani. Apostle. Everyone wants a piece of you. I hear there's even a bounty on your head. I'm afraid you've left me at a disadvantage. I'll even the battlefield. I have as many names as I have friends. And enemies. Some call me Anna. What do you want from me, Anna? I like the emphasis. You're a clever boy. I want your assistance, but not right now. You're meeting someone. I'd hate to get in the way. How I just you... wanted a chance to introduce myself, and now I have. So it's time to leave. Let me up sometime. You can find me at this table most evenings. If not, Olvik can pass a message. Big man behind the bar. Wears an apron with a cock, a rooster, and a kitten on it. Can't miss him. Be seeing you, friend. Wait. How did you see through my veil? What? You shouldn't be able to recognize me on sight. Unless you know me intimately. I don't know what you're talking about. Be seeing you, Alvani. The witch and the vicar had six shots of liquor and presently went for a walk. Come on, said the clergy, a man has his urges, but the witch only wanted to talk. <laughs> Ulvik, the publican, is pleasant enough and apparently a friend to the resistance. If it wasn't for his insistence on making me drink beer, I think I'd quite enjoy Alvik's company. Some nights I wish I'd stayed on the Kandar's task and never returned. Things were simpler out there on the Great Ocean. You only had to worry about the wind and the weather. Things would have been different had I married the lovely Princess Kumaka back when I was younger. But it was not to be. Instead, I came back to Mercuria to battle the Tyrant. At least I have this place to my name. The rooster and kitten is my island of tranquility in the sea of shit this city has become. When I've saved enough iron, I'll set sail for the southern seas. I really like Enu. She's quick, smart, capable and funny. I don't think I quite understand her, but I do like her. Enu's a great counterbalance to Liko, and I know he would do anything for her. Enu. Our Zidling. She's a great asset to the Resistance. Who was that? What? Who? Where? That woman. Who was she? A mystery woman, huh? I don't know. I'm not a guy. I don't go looking at every woman who passes by. Liko? Uh-huh. Did you see a mystery woman? No. God, you need to get out more. Is this place safe for the two of you? What? Oh, you mean this. The face. The fur. This is a safe place. But Azadi drink here. Ulvik keeps it all under control. Also, magicals are still allowed passage in the city as long as they have valid passes and carry no weapons. Visibly. You have passes? Sure do, but we it's- We shouldn't push our luck. It's time to go. Yeah, that. Come on, Kian. You passed Liko's test. You're okay. We'll head back to HQ. Test? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, um, Liko? I told you I would not trust you. And now you do? No. I merely distrust you a little less. But you did well. I won't kill you. Yet. That's him being real friendly, you know. Hugs? No? Yeah, me neither. Okay, we really need to go. Come on.
So what did your mystery woman look like? She had long auburn hair and light freckled skin. She dressed like a ranger. Of course she did. Your type, huh? I don't really have a... a type. Really? Guy like you, I thought you'd be super choosy. I'm not a... God. I've not had much time for... for women in my life. Leaping leapers, are you joking? How old are you? Look at you, you're gorgeous! How did that come out of my mouth? Leaping... leap furs? Nope. Just nope. You do like women though, right? Shadow take me. Not that there's anything wrong with, you know... In fact, I could have That's set you up enough, with... That's quite enough, I don't know, this just happens. It's a sickness. I open my mouth and... Blah! It's really disturbing. Parsis, what are you doing out so late? Drinking. Dancing. Just drinking. Next time, go drinking inside the wall. We don't need your kind at our bars. <clears throat> no, uh, you're absolutely right. You really, really don't. Goodbye. Dancing? Right then and there, it felt like an appropriate answer. Tell me again about this test. I expected you to run straight to your mistresses, Almani. You may be of some use to us. For a while. I will still kill you. Nothing you can do will ever repay your debt to my family and people. Cheerful. Death? Never you mind, Zidling. This is between the Apostle and myself. Zidling? Really? Really? You know I'm not actually a Zidling, right, Glumbum? I'm of age and I've already been with several that men... That mouth thing again, Zidling. <laughs> Thanks. Where is everyone? In bed, I guess. It is late. He's right. It's never this empty. Something's wrong. We should hurry. Keep moving. We don't know how many of them there are. Come on, we need to get to the boat. <gasps> good catch, Kian. That was a good catch, wasn't it, Liko? He survived. It was acceptable. Uh, he's totally warming up to you. Thank the gods of old, our boat is still here. Ladies first. That means you guys. You guys were the ladies. It was a joke. Fine. I'll go first. I laughed. On the inside. You would have exploded. I don't think your body can handle laughter, Lego. I'm glad you're all back safely. How did it go? Kian was awesome. He even saved our lives. I would have caught the arrow. Yeah, I know, but Kian did, and it was awesome! Any news of the Informer? We brought him here for questioning. Was that wise? He knows our location now. That won't be a problem for long. 
Maybe not for you, Liko, but it is a problem for me. We don't just execute our prisoners once we're done with them. How did the rest of your mission go? Alvani followed our instructions. He completed his task to our satisfaction. The end result was adequate. Hey, whoa. Don't get all mushy on us now, Liko. I'm glad to see that the three of you can work together. While you were away, we received some news. Bob, who can see? Right you are, ma'am. As most of you know, the first of the six has been due to arrive in Mercuria for weeks now. Well, she's arrived. Their cloud ship docked with the tower not an hour ago. And she ain't alone. The first is Iazadi's highest authority. Of course he won't travel alone. Aye, there's that, but I'm not talking about bodyguards, or handmaidens, or the like. No. She's got some real interesting company. One General Hami, alongside a Mother Utana. What did you say? Hami, General, Utana, Mother. Do you know them? I do. They're with the first of the six. So word has it. How do you know this? Do you have eyes inside the tower? Not inside, no. On the ground, here and there, close enough. Some tell secrets for money, or to protect their own secrets. Some are sympathetic to the Magicals. And some are unhappy with Saya and her lapdog Vamon. They run the city still. Word is, they're intimate. A sister and a soldier? That's a capital crime. Well, that, with Saya ruling the church, and Vamon, the state here in Mercuria, there's not much anyone can do. If anyone can, it will be General Hami and Mother Utana. You know them well, then? You knew. You knew they were coming, and you knew my history with them. That's why you freed me from... Naane! Finally. What news from Miria? Liko, Shepard, the rebuilding progresses and... Alvani, you are on your feet again. The traitor. She betrayed the resistance to save herself. And now she's come back. Don't they know who she is and what she's done? I must tell them before she flees. The traitor. What's that witch doing here? They must not know who she is and what she's done. If I tell them now she's dead, I must confront her in private. The traitor. They're... They're all well. Rebuilding... Uh, apologies, Shepard. I'm... Tired from my travels. I would like to retire to my quarters. Of course. Let's speak tomorrow. That goes for all of us. The hour is late. We will reconvene after breakfast. You knew they were coming. The General and the Mother. That's why you sent Captain Bakim to Friar's Keep. That's why you freed me. Kian. Liko was right. You're using me. All those words about being a symbol, about being important to the Resistance. Does the one exclude the other? You are a symbol. You are a warrior. And now, you're a rebel. I knew they were coming, Utala and Hami. And I knew from our spies in Sardia that you were bound to them both. We saw an opportunity, and we sent Barkin to free you. You can see that we're desperate, Kian. Afraid, alone. Most humans have already given up, given in, become comfortable with this new world, with the Azadi. Many have forgotten about the Magicals, or chosen to forget. They carry on their lives, even if we cannot. We few are all that remains of the Resistance. If we lose, all is lost. Our lives, our hopes, our entire future. Lost. To darkness. I will do anything to save my people. 
make terrible sacrifices, tell lies, anything. Wouldn't you, Kian? So yes, you are a tool. And you are a symbol. Our secret weapon. The key to our survival. It's been a long and tiring day. And there's still much I need to do. We can continue our conversation another day. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I had no choice. They forced me, they... Good, yes. Yes, I did. They threatened me and my family and my livelihood. That still doesn't explain why you were at the National Front Meeting. I had to keep up appearances, and it's where I'd meet with my under. I'd report to him about what was going on in Old Town. Yeah, he'd ask me questions about certain people, magicals, suspected rebels. But I didn't tell him everything, I swear. I only did what I had to do to protect my family. Please. Please believe me, I have no choice. I've been expecting you. Why did you protect me in there? Why not tell them what I did? I only had a moment to decide. That's not enough time to weigh a person's life. I have no intention of protecting her secrets, but her selfless actions granted me a second chance. At the very least, she deserves to be heard. I called her a traitor, but are we so different? It was her portal that helped me escape the keep. She healed my wounds. She knew I might expose her, and yet... Yet she saved my life. Why did you save me? Because you were sick. Because you needed me. Because without my help, you would have died. Knowing I might tell everyone what you did. That made no difference. The Resistance needs you. So I did my part. You're still a traitor. I did betray the Resistance. But before you decide what to do with me, will you hear me out? I will base my decision on what I know and what I think is right, not on her words. Everyone deserves to be heard. Maybe the others won't give her that opportunity. Speak. When I gave you the location of our base and betrayed April, I thought I was sacrificing one person to save everyone else. But many died because of my actions. This has haunted me. I have questioned my motives. Did I sell her out to save the shipment of food and medicines? Without it, many would have suffered. The old, the sickly, the children. Or did I betray the resistance to save my own skin? I would have been executed by the Azadi. I truly don't know. Perhaps it was a little of both. Perhaps things are not so black and white. We can never truly know the consequences of our actions. If you keep my secret, I can continue to help. I am of real value to the Resistance, despite my crimes. Turn me in, and more will suffer. But justice, for what it's worth, will be served. It's your choice to make, Alvane, not mine. What is your decision? What will you do with me? However she chooses to justify her betrayal, regardless of her importance to the Resistance, the others deserve to know. Her fate needs to be in their hands. She's important to the Resistance. Without her, they will be even weaker. I must protect her secret. Whatever the consequences. I'll be watching you. I promise you won't regret your decision. I will live to repent my sins and serve the Resistance. I'm in your debt, Alvane. 
Always and forever. You saved my life, but I may still call on you one day to do something for me. I'll be ready. The first is on her way. Has she mentioned him? I don't think so. You do know she's brought General Harmy and that mother with her. Utana, it means nothing. The General was due back in the Northlands. What about the mother? She's rumored to be next in line for the seat. She wants to be involved. She was also the bleeding heart who practically raised Salvani. She sponsored his whole education. Light. She could be a problem, but what can we do? We make sure none of them know Kian is alive and with the Resistance. Mistress, your presence here honors us. Sister Sire, this is an impressive edifice. It appears your work here has borne fruit. We believe so, Mistress. We welcome you to Mercuria and the Northlands. Anything you need, you let me know. Mother, I'm pleased to see you as well. To have the both of you here is a great honor. Quite. The Seat wants to know how the mission goes, how the Northlanders are handling the transition, and how many of them have chosen to embrace the light of the Goddess. We will speak of this, and much more. For now, we have prepared dinner for all of you. I hope you will join me. Right. Well, I am starving. The food on those cloud ships... General, I did not expect to see you back so soon. Neither did I. What's this I hear about Kian? Yes, what of the Apostle? It pains me to inform you that Alvane died in a riot. He was detained under penalty of death until your visit, Mistress. Unfortunately, the rebels snuck their agents into the prison. They cut him down and burned his body. Goddess guide his immortal soul to the First Mountain. With every respect to you and your seat, Mother, Alvani was a traitor. He betrayed the cause and he- May I remind you, sister, that the Apostle was never relieved of his title and should be addressed properly? And may I also remind you that without a proper trial and judgment by the first of the six, his so-called treason remains an accusation and nothing more. Now that he's... no longer with us, we may never know the truth. But our people will not be told that the Apostle was a traitor. Mother. How did you say he died, Commander? Uh, stabbed during a riot. They burned his body, hopefully after he'd bled out. We weren't able to retake the prison until the next morning. I will need to see the keep for myself, Commander, and interview the guards and prisoners. Certainly. I shall make arrangements for you to visit in a couple of days. Don't bother, Vamon. I'll go there tomorrow. You don't have to trouble yourself. I'm sure you have better things to do. As you wish, Mir. How is the engine progressing? The engineers are working day and night to connect the tubes. We expect to be able to switch it on according to schedule. Good. I have brought the final instructions from Sadir. The architect will send any remaining modifications by cloud ship. And when the Prophet returns, he will inspect the engine before we switch it on. Have you not spoken with him? Not for many months, but he will be here when our goddess-given task is complete. Only he will know how to bring it to life and to interpret the messages from the engine. Of course. Please, will the two of you accompany me to the dinner table? I'm sure the kitchen is worried the food will turn cold before we are seated. General. Commander. Until tomorrow, sister. Mother. My lady. Vamon, if you'll dine with me in my quarters? Of course, Mia. Tell me again what happened at the keep. Hello? Hello? 
You were there. Ixul Panax Brekar. We met. Is that a... a man? It doesn't look human. What is that? Have we... have we met before? We will. We are meeting now. Venari Abnaxus et al. I am Abnaxus of the Venar. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Zoe of, um, the humans. Who's that? He will be Ular Pala, chief of the Ular. Those who remained, children of the Purple Mountains. Okay, this is a dream, right? It was. You dreamed of things else when. Of Abnaxus who was, and who will soon have passed beyond the veil and into the great forgetfulness. In the dream, I will speak of the time that has flowed, and the time that will still flow. But outside the dream, I will be sick. I was like a petrified tree in the middle of a river, frozen in this moment, while time parts around me. I think he said his name is Abnaxus. Is he human or something else? He does not look human. I don't think he's human. So why am I having this dream? You were needed. Achik Aksik Nabe Ajna Achik Aksik. The first dreamer needs you. The first... dreamer? How did he get over there so quickly? There's some sort of doorway into the mountain. This one is also sick. This one is dying. Lux Kamel. What does that mean? This one's name is Lux. This one is the first dreamer. This one is like you, like your sister, like those who did dream and shaped reality. I can't tell if it's a boy or a girl, but she or he is beautiful. Lux. Light in Latin, but I have no idea if it's the same here. The first dreamer. That reminds me of something. Am I a dreamer? No, that can't be it. Can it? Another dreamer. Wait, that, that wasn't real. That was... that was just another dream. Yes. And also much more. We needed you to come. You came. You will come here to help Lux. Everything depends on this. Everything that was, is, and will be. If this one ends, everything ends. All of time. Someone... Someone else told me the same thing. What does it mean? This one is the first dreamer. This one dreams. And the dream is the universe. 
When the dream ends. W what's happening? W where are you going? Hey! Hey, come back! Tell me what's going on! Zoe? Zoe? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. I... Oh, I was just dreaming. You were crying out in your sleep. Nightmare? Do you want to talk about it? Uh, yes, it was, and uh, no, I don't. Oh. What time is it? Time for me to leave and for you to start getting ready for your doctor's appointment. Oh, I want to sleep. Yeah, well, too bad. See you later? Uh, uh, sure. I'll stop by the office when I'm done. Okay. Love you. Mm, me too. A demanding flatmate, but I did insist on buying a good bed. This is that. I like beds. I like spending time in beds. By that, I don't just mean sleeping, but also other bed-related activities. Sex. I mean sex. I enjoy having sex. In bed. Like a human person with genitals. Memories. I need those around. Three months now, and I still haven't unpacked most of my useless crap. I can't even remember what's in these boxes. I tossed everything from my bedroom in Casablanca in there. I haven't felt up to sorting through it all. One of these days, for sure. Not now. Tonight. Definitely tonight. Time to roll up my shirt sleeves and get my shit together. After the Eurotrash premiere, of course. I can't miss that. And they said I couldn't take care of a living thing. In their stupid faces. Mr. Planty. He's been through a lot, poor chap. The drought of last Tuesday. The great tumble of June. This morning's accident with the half-empty beer can. Poor Mr. Planty. We have the best view of a brick wall and neon signs in Propast. If by best, you mean worst. It's very film noir. We're living inside a film noir. Noiry. How come it's always raining when I'm in here, but when I go outside, it's not? Mind you, I'm not complaining, it's just odd. Okay, so there are dirty dishes. We're not perfect. I think it's my turn. Ugh. Yeah, no. Later. I don't use that a lot, but Rez is a pretty good cook. The apartment came with a traditional stovetop and oven, which is great since it lets us, well, Reza, cook traditional dinners. We don't have a maker, but there's so much good street food in this neighborhood, we won't starve. Not my day to cook. Also, not the time to cook. Also, no groceries to cook with. I'm cook blocked. Our fridge is a barren womb. A desolate no man's land of soy sauce, a half-eaten box of takeaway noodles, a decimated six-pack of bear beer and baking soda. Not even a single fridge magnet. We're the worst people. We could survive without a fridge. It's only used for keeping takeaway leftovers until they have to be tossed and beer, so... Oh, okay, so we could not survive without it. What would be the point? It's even sadder on the inside. 
Reza bought that. I'm, um, uh, yeah. I didn't buy that. What is that? A rake? I think it's a rake. I don't get it. The bathroom is depressingly small. You take turns and sex in the shower would be an extreme sport. Even if the building was up to scratch, that bathroom would be reason enough to move. Do I have to pee? No, I don't have to pee. Much as I'd like to go out dressed in nothing but my knickers, I think I'll get dressed. <laughs>